Hello friends, today I am going to show you how to set up Netgear Orbi Mesh Wi-Fi system RBK852 model. This particular model, if you have seen my earlier video, then you might be knowing this is a Wi-Fi 6 model and it is a tri-band router which has one 2.4 gigahertz and two 5 gigahertz band. The setting up is really easy my friends, let's go through the video and you will know how to do it or not. First of all what you need to do is you need to install this Netgear Orbi app on your phone using the Apple Store or Google Play Store. After installing it you need to connect the router not the satellite the router first to the power cable and uh, connect the Ethernet port to this yellow color port here. These all four ports are extra ports that you can use for the external uses after you configure this router. These all ports are 1 gigabit Ethernet ports. So if you have a 1 gigabit connection and your desktop or laptop supports Ethernet ports of 1 gigabit then you can connect that. And it's a very good thing that you get on the satellite four Ethernet output ports. So it's a good thing. So let's start my friends. On the app on the app we will open this up and we'll see what instructions it gives. So first of all it's asking for the allow notifications. Okay, we'll allow it. Now it is starting as it gets started. So we have to create an account first. Let me do this. I would like to keep a note friends, if you are going to create the account, then do remember that it asks to accept a marketing thing here. Yeah. So if you don't want the marketing mails to come, then just untick this, okay? This app also supports one touch login, like with the fingerprint. If you are using a Face ID phone like the iPhone 11 Pro, that will also work here. After completion of the account creation, we get this message. Do you want to install a new Netgear product? We'll go here and select yes. After that, it asks set up your Orbi system to receive powerful coverage throughout your home settings. Second is your settings. Third is your service. Okay, we'll get started here. Now it asks to point the camera towards the QR code. Okay, but since we haven't switched on Let's see what it says. Reboot your modem. Unplug your internet modem. Remove and reinsert any backup batteries. Remove your modem. Back in and wait for it to power on. Okay, let's do that. I have done that. Then we'll select next. In here it's asking, use the provided ethernet cable to connect your modem to your Orbi router's internet port. Then connect your router to a power source. So I have connected that and we have connected to the power source. Then we will click next. Place your satellite in location that is within your router's Wi-Fi range. Then connect your satellite to a power source. Okay, we will start this router first. So as you can see here, I have darkened the room here to show you the light glowing under this router as it is getting set it up. After clicking next, it takes a few time to get connected with this. So I'll wait for this to get set it up and uh, I'll show you what shows on the next screen. There is a slight change here, my friends. You need to switch on all the routers at the same time. Like you have to switch on the router here as well as where you want to set up your satellite. You should keep that and switch that on. You have to switch both on. And after that only you get this message. Orbi wants to join to Wi-Fi. Okay, we'll join. I think it will be done automatically as you can see it has done automatically connected now it's detecting the satellites so you can install up to I think uh, 
as far as I talked with the Netgear specialist technician and the engineer, they told me that we can add up to six satellites in here and uh, Netgear handles all. But uh, officially Netgear sells only one router and two satellites. So my friends, it's up to you. You can install up to three or six. So it is detecting the satellite make sure that all satellites are powered on yes the satellites are on so let me skip this part for the next phase what it shows and i'll show you what is in the next screen so as you can see here after it is detected it shows one satellite or one found okay one of one that means we have only one satellite here I do have one as you have seen then we'll click continue personalize your settings okay next so it is asking to give a name to this Wi-Fi and as you can see this is the by default password so basically you can change the name and password here of your Wi-Fi SSID but we will keep is same right now because we have to check the speed test and everything or you can change it for your own choice let's do that after entering your, your Wi-Fi name and password you will get this how to set up your admin login so basically you can change your name and everything here but I will keep it as it is because it is natural to keep it same because if you forget it then you have to reset the whole setup again so for safety reasons I have given a password here and you have to select remember me or else uh, it won't get connected again select next now it is asking that uh, touch ID should be enabled for the quicker login yes we will enable it after that it is asking some security questions here I will enter this up after entering your password recovery, this screen comes up and uh, the new Wi-Fi name I've given is the Sadofax and it will take one minute to connect it. Let's wait and see what is happening and it is taking its basic setups and all as you can see the LED is still growing here. So let me skip this part a bit. So after it is connected, I have, uh, yes, RB wants to join the Wi-Fi, okay, join, RB network detected, checking for new firmware, so it takes the, about 5 minutes to check out if there is any Wi-Fi's new firmware softwares like on this router or in the satellite and it will get installed automatically or we have to select it let's wait for five minutes my friend and I'll show you what comes next here we go my friends as you can see we have received a new firmware software here it shows the current is 3.2.10.11 whereas the new version is 3.215.25 we'll select update Rebooting your RB might take about three minutes. So we'll wait for three minutes and we'll see what happens In the meantime, let me tell you my friends If you are using mesh Wi-Fi, I suggest you use these on any kind of backup internet connections or you should have a backup power supply if in your area you are having a lot of power surge or power disconnections or there is power outage then do use UPS with this or else install an inverter in your home so that this doesn't get reset every time when it gets rebooted usually that doesn't happen a lot but sometimes there is a power surge then the whole system's setup is erased from its memories do keep that in mind. That happens in TP-Link a lot, but this is Netgear, so I'd hope that it works fine if with the power cuts and all. I will give you the feedback about that later in the comment section below or in the descriptions. So it is taking a bit time, so let me skip this part. 
So as you can see here, the firmware is updated now. Now it shows that update is successful and then we'll click next. Searching for shadow facts, that is my Wi-Fi name that I have given. And for your reference, let me show you my friends. I do have another Wi-Fi switched on here for checking out any kind of signal problem. There are two Wi-Fi's here. Both are running on 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5 gigahertz. And we'll see if there is any drop in speeds. So it takes another one minute to set it up. Let's see. So after a one minute or so, this screen popped up like up and running RB is now configured so next as compared to the TP-Link setup mesh Wi-Fi TP-Link setup I see Netgear is not that fast it takes a bit time let's log in or create your Netgear account to unlock all your OB features continue uh, we do have an account so I will log in immediately so as you can see here, after logging, we see this, there is internet, also there is one satellite and uh, we can see only one device here, well, understanding Wi-Fi, the primary difference between 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequencies are the range and the bandwidth and that the band provided for your connected devices. The 2.4 GHz band provides coverage at a longer range but transmits data at slower speeds. The 5 GHz band provides less coverage but transmits data at faster speeds. Okay, got it. So we have connected only one phone, that is this phone. We haven't connected a lot of devices. Let's see if we have a speed test app here. Yeah, we have some of the features like uh, security. It's validating the account and checking the net gear. Okay, it doesn't exist. So we'll check uh, internet speed here network map is it shows how many satellite we are having here and uh, where where it is installed and everything then next we can also check out the guest Wi-Fi which is off now uh, the Wi-Fi settings are here like the username password and everything you can also select the security type and you can also share the Wi-Fi from here and uh, there is a traffic meter here we can turn it on to check out which device is taking how much speed or which device is how much using up the data that we can check this out in here with the traffic meter on it takes a few time as you can see here it shows how much data it's consumed and upload and download everything and uh, last there is a support here we can also go to support from directly from the app if we face any problem there will be some troubleshootings here there are some topics here we can search and uh, lastly we will check out what's here there are some settings more from Netgear add satellite if you buy another satellite you can add it here if you are going to set up a new then you can go here account management is about the account that we have and we can go here settings we can check out the, all the things that we have on the home screen as well now we will go inside and check the internet speed it will show the internet speed here let's test my speed this is an in-app speed test we'll check out what speed we're getting here I have a hundred by hundred internet connection let's hope we get good speeds here So the down is around uh, 70 and upload is around 50. That's what the speed test shows in the on Netgear app. But uh, let me check it out on uh, my browser, what we are getting here. Open speed test, let's check this out. So I'm getting full internet speeds. My Fiber connection is around 100 Mbps down and 100 Mbps up. 
so I'm getting around 90 then it's all the way that it comes in an average this is in India and it uh, upload is going around 100 Mbps but uh, sometimes it's dropping and this device is iPhone SE so we do have Wi-Fi 6 connected in here so that's all my friends thank you for watching this was the video for the setup of Netgear mesh Wi-Fi system RB AX6000 if you have any doubts feel free to ask in the comment section below do subscribe to the channel bye bye